Hi, this is 3.2, Properties of Determinants. Previous lesson, we found that if we take the matrix A and we go ahead and find the determinant, we're going to end up with negative 18. Now, our ultimate goal is to try to make some of these things easier. And so if we can do row reduction, then we can maybe figure out the determinant in a little bit easier way. And so we're going to see what happens when we uh, do row reduction. So first of all, what if we interchange two rows? Go ahead and find the determinant of each one of these because this one, all I did was I switched these two rows. And this one, I just switched these two rows. Find the determinant and tell us what happens. Pause this. So thanks for figuring this out yourself and I want to know what do you notice? What do you notice with your answer here and your answer here compared to this one right here? So what conclusion do you think we can draw from based on a couple of examples? Now this doesn't necessarily tell you what happens all the time, but in this case it does tell you what happens all the time. So that's the conclusion that you can draw if we interchange two rows. I'm not going to do it for you. You got to do it. How about this next example? What if we multiply a row by a scalar? So if I notice up here, I have this row right here, zeros and a negative three. So I want to turn that into a zero, one, zero, which is what we do when we do row reduction. So that's what I did right here. I turned that row into a zero, one, zero. So in other words, I took row three and I multiplied it by a negative one third. What does that mean for us? Once again, you got to crunch it. So I'm going to give you two options. You're either going to end up with negative one third times the determinant of A or negative three times the determinant of A. So in row reduction, what if we go ahead and take a multiple of a row and add it to another row? So here's one more. I want you to go ahead and find the determinant of this one. We know the determinant of this one's negative 18. Find the determinant of this one here and tell me what happens. So go ahead and pause this and find that out. And what conclusion can you draw if we take a multiple of a row and add it to another row? You got to do the work here. Nice. I like it. So let's go back up here and make sure you did get this right. If I interchange two rows, you are going to end up with the opposite sign of the determinant of what we started off with. And so both of these would be 18. So if we interchange two rows, we change the sign of the determinant. For this one here, well, which one is going to be? Well, this one was a negative 3 before. Now it's a 1. So it's going to bring it down by a scalar of one third, and so it's going to be negative one third times the determinant of A. Now you do have to be careful because if I'm looking at the determinant of this one right here, that's going to be in comparison to my A, so this is going to be negative three times the determinant of this is going to be equal to the determinant of A. So in other words, if I factor out, I'm just going to factor out a negative three. So think about factoring out when you're doing these processes as you go. This right here is the fact, however, that doesn't help you help us directly when we're going to be finding the determinant of A, because we're solving for this. And our final conclusion here is that if we have a multiple of a row and add it to another row, determinant stays the same. That seems weird. We're doing a lot more and then the determinant doesn't change. So we know that, well, further to the point, let's row reduce as far as possible and see what happens. So here's my A. So I'm going to do row reduction and figure out what my determinant ends up being. So if you notice from going from here to here, I'm going to add, I'm sorry, multiply row one by negative one half and add it to row two. So when I do that, I'm doing this right here, taking a multiple of a row and adding it to another row. So that doesn't change anything. So we're still at the same determinant. So what happens in this third one? Well, we end up dividing the second row by 2.5. 
What I like to say, though, is that we factor out the 2.5. So when we do that, I know that my original determinant is going to be 2.5 times as much. And also, we divide row 3 by negative 3. So in other words, I factor out a negative 3. So what does that mean for us? That means that row 2, we took out a 2.5. Row 3, we took out a negative 3. And now we still have the determinant of this thing right here left. And, and this kind of makes sense. I know that the determinant of this is negative 18. So when I reduce my numbers in this matrix right here, yeah, I'm going to have to have some multipliers on there to get me back to the negative 18. So ultimately, we want to find the determinant of A, but just using different methods. Now, see if you can see the operation that I did there. Well, I just switched two rows. So what's going to happen with this one is that I'm just going to take a negative 1. I interchange two rows, and so I'm going to end up with this. And now this is the determinant of whatever's left. This one, we just took a multiple of one row and added it to another one to eliminate this one here. So that doesn't change whatever we're doing. This next one, I factor out a negative 3 fifths. So I'm going to have to add that to the barrage of numbers I have. So this is 2.5. Oh, I forgot my negative 1. 2.5, negative 3. And what did I do? Well, we divided by negative 5 thirds, but we really factored out the negative 3 fifths. So just think of it like that. That's better. Factor out the 3 fifths, and then I go ahead and take the determinant of this one, put it in there. That's all for this matrix right here. And then for this matrix, I just multiplied and added in order to get this term down. So that doesn't change anything. So now I'm here at my identity matrix. Woo, row reduction. Well, what does that give us? Well, let's put all the pieces together. We note that this one right here is a 1, so we factored out a 4. So let's just use that language rather than saying divided by negative 4. So I have my negative 1, my 2.5, my negative 3, negative 3 fifths, and now I factor out a 4. And the determinant of the identity matrix, we know that that's just 1. So if we multiply this all together, what do we get? And so if I put the 2.5 and multiply by the negative 3 fifths, I just get negative 1.5. This is negative 12, and I multiply by negative 1.5. That's a positive 18. Oh, negative 18. Woo. There it is. Now, why would we do this? Well, one of the reasons is for you computer programmers, if you have to program and do cofactor expansion. So, for instance, if you have 25 rows and columns, you're going to have possibly 25 factorial ca calculations. I don't know if you know what this number means, but try putting that into your calculator. Wow, it might blow it up. Be careful. It's going to get really hot. It's a huge number. And so for a computer to calculate that, it's going to take years to calculate. However, row reduction, a computer can do row reduction uh, far easier than they can do cofactor expansion, and so it's going to be far, far fewer calculations for the determinant. That's why. So yes, we're looking at computer programming here a little bit. So theorem 3 tells us right here, let A be a square matrix. If a multiple of one row of A is added to another row to produce matrix B, then the determinant of B equals the determinant of A. Nothing changes. If two rows are interchanged, then the uh, determinants are going to be the opposite sign. And then if we multiply by K, we're going to get determinant of B is equal to K times the determinant of A. Yeah, we don't like to do that because we just want to factor out and this makes more sense, but if we factor out from a row, then whatever we factor out from B is going to be multiplied by that number, and that's going to give us the determinant of A. So moving on, you're going to have to try some of this, so I would try to jump ahead. So we want to find the determinant of this thing right here. 
but we want to do it by uh, row reduction to echelon form. So my first step is to take multiples of the first row to eliminate the 2 and the negative 3. So now looking at a couple items here, this one, oh, these almost became exactly the same. If they're exactly the same, two rows, well, I'm going to add one to the other, and I'm going to get a whole row of zeros. If you do your matrix multiplication with a whole row of zeros for a determinant, you aren't going to end up with a value for the determinant besides zero. Oh, so if these are multiples of this, determinant zero, determinant zero, oh, this is a multiple of this, this is, oh, it's not invertible. Uh-oh, that falls in line with everything else. So the determinant equaling zero tells us that we're not invertible. Nice. Let's move on. I want to go ahead and eliminate this one and this negative one. So this is what I ended up with. And now I want to go ahead and switch this row. I got to get this. Switch this row and this row. And I also want to factor out the negative 10 right there. So I'm going to take out the 10, and I'm going to switch the rows. And I'm going to get the determinant, 1, 3, 2, negative 4, 0. Now the question is, is do I want to keep on doing this and eliminate the upper triangular matrix and turn it all into zeros, or am I good to go? Well, let's notice some things here. Down here now, I have this in reduced echelon form. And so if I have these as all zeros, think about our process for calculating the determinant. Well, if all of these down here are zeros, that means that all I'm going to end up with for a determinant is coming down the main diagonal. And if I come down the main diagonal, I'm just going to get a 1. So this is pretty much done. So you, if you get a triangular matrix here, you can just take the main diagonal, multiply all those together, and that will give you a determinant. So all this, what does this mean? This means 10 times negative 1 times 1 is my answer. So the determinant of that matrix that we start off with is negative 10. So if the triangular entries are all zeros, the determinant is the product of all the entries in the main diagonal. Nice. So that's where we end up with negative 10. Not so bad, huh? And theorem 5, if A is an n by n matrix, the determinant of A transpose is equal to the determinant of A. It's nice to kind of write these numbers out and see how they fall in line with the other matrix. This isn't a great example to show this, but I can do the determinant by rewriting, etc. And I'm going to get negative 18 again. It's not great to show because I get all these zeros, but it works for all of them, okay? And then the last one, if A and B are n by A matrices, then the determinant of the product is equal to the product of the determinants. Why don't you go ahead and with this simple example and verify that for yourself. So great, this is the end of 3.2. I hope you really enjoyed this. And I have the result of that last one here if you want to see that. Have a great day. Bye-bye.